Oh uh, boy, I got another mic review, but at least this one's a little different. This one comes in white. <laughs> right, disclaimer. This was sent out to me for review, but that won't affect my review in any way, shape, or form. Anything you're gonna hear here is my own personal opinion. That being said, let's get started. Now the microphone we're looking at today is the Movo UM700W, which is another condenser microphone designed to take on the Blue Yeti line. In the box, it's very nicely packed in foam, as I would expect from condenser microphones these days. In the box, you get the microphone itself, a USB-A to USB-C cable, as well as a USB-C to USB-C cable. You also get a satisfaction card, a manual, and a sticker. <laughs> Up close, you can tell this microphone was designed to take on the Blue Yeti. It is extremely extremely solidly built with everything basically being made of metal aside from the knobs. When unfolded, it even comes to the same height as the Blue Yeti. Taking a closer look at the front, we have a mute button as well as a power indicator LED and a volume dial for your headphones when you're monitoring your sound. On the back are two more dials, one for gain and one to change your polar pattern, which also mirrors the Blue Yeti. On the bottom you have the stand mount, headphone port for monitoring, and a USB-C port which is already a big step over the Yeti which still uses mini USB and some other companies will still copy that. Another physical thing it has over Yeti is its mounting system. Which which, while similar, has a simpler design, opting for just two fitted mounting washers rather than many free hanging washers which the Yeti uses. I would have preferred the rubber grommets you'll see on some other microphones, but it's still a lot better than the Yeti's idea. As per usual, I'm going to do a sound test in its different polar pattern to see how well it does in picking up my voice as well as rejecting sounds around depending on what polar pattern I'm on. For example, I'm currently using a cardioid polar pattern, so it's better at capturing the front and rejecting the sides. But here's how it's going to sound with me talking to the front. Now I'm going to move it off to the side to see how well it'll cancel out the sound of my voice from the side and now I'm on to the back of it to see if it'll cancel it out better off to the other side and let's twist it to the front this way so we don't like tangle the cord now I'm gonna start typing and talking a little bit at the same time see how well it does in rejecting the sound off of my keyboard a little next to it off to the side while I'm talking and not talking how about clicking see if it captures any of that at all and that is the cardioid polar pattern, how it's going to sound. So let's switch it over to one of the other ones right now in the back. Say, omnidirectional. So right now with the omnidirectional polar pattern, it should capture sound all around it quite evenly. And let's um, pick it up and give it a talk around to see if my voice does fluctuate in any sort of way. It really shouldn't because it is omnidirectional. So no matter all the way around, it should capture just the same. So it's good if you're in an environment where you're trying to capture everyone. I don't know if I should do any clicking or typing just because omnidirectional it's going to capture sounds more easily, but let's do it anyway. So, you know, it's most definitely going to pick up my um, typing as well as my clicking because it is the omnidirectional polar pattern. Now, what if we switch it over to another one? So let's go to stereo. With the stereo polar pattern, you're going to hear me from side to side, so it's going to be like... Um, if I'm over to the left, you're going to definitely hear me more on the left side versus if I switch over to the right side, you're going to hear me more to your right side. And then back to the front, you hear me quite evenly. But if I pick it up and I move it around, you will begin to hear me as I go around the microphone and creep around your ears if you're wearing headphones or earbuds. So I'm um, sorry if it's a little bit weird. And let me put that down. Obviously, because it's stereo, you'll hear my clicking off to your right. If you're gonna like if you're gaming, I wouldn't really use this one. I would just stick to cardioid, but you know, if you want to, that's how you're gonna do. Now if I type, let's see if it rejects that or captures it more. I'm gonna get a bit more of a sound because it is trying to capture from the lefts and rights a bit more versus cardioid, which will try to reject it. So um yeah, that's the stereo polar pattern. Alright, now we're in the bi-directional polar pattern. So the bi-directional polar pattern captures from the front and the back and rejects the sides. So technically speaking, it should capture my voice fine here, but if I move off to the side over here, I'm now quieter because it's rejecting me. Now if I move off to the back of it, it'll capture my voice once again very well because it's designed to capture from the front and the back in case you're having a one-on-one -on -one interview with someone, like you're over here and your friend is over where I'm at over here on the microphone. Now if I move it off to the other side, once again, it should project my voice a bit more versus the front and the back and that's how it's going to sound. All right, now let's see how this sounds if I try to like type with it off to the side. I don't know if I would really do be typing much if I'm doing an interview, but you know, just in case if I'm typing off to the sides, like maybe I have a friend taking notes, we'll see if it captures any of this sound. How about clicking? And well, that's that. All right, so far so good. Like through the test, it did pretty well. But one thing it didn't do too well on is uh, vibration reduction. So like when I'm typing, it captures a lot of the vibrations of my table running from the keyboard into the table and you know into the stand and then capturing it into the mic itself. So it caught a lot of the vibration sounds, which isn't too great. But this also happens with the Blue Yeti and basically pretty much 
any other table microphone. Generally speaking, if your microphone is a table microphone and sits right by your keyboard and you're typing with it, you're gonna capture those vibrations and there's a reason a lot of people will buy boom arms to keep their microphone off the table and away from the source of vibration. And because of that, I'm not gonna dock any points off of it because a lot of tabletop microphones will always just get those vibrations. That's just how things go, especially if you're very heavy handed when you're typing. All right, now with all that being said and done, overall, this microphone is actually pretty good and is actually at a pretty good value at $100, which beats out the Blue Yeti in terms of price while still giving you the same, if not better performance. But Paul, there's cheaper microphones out there like the FiFine K 690 which is like 80 to 85 depending on like the day and the sales and whatnot and it gives you the same performance as the Movo but there are some things that make this Movo microphone more worth it than the Fifine K690 despite like the very similar abilities and a major one that might seem like a small thing to some people is the fact that this uses USB-C and this still uses the old school mini USB that you find on the Blue Yeti. Mini USB is a very old port and it's sort of like a one that's fading away from existence as time goes by there will be more USB-C cables around and less mini USB cables available. If I was buying a new microphone and I had to choose between having a hundred dollar microphone with USB-C versus saving like 20 bucks to get one that uses mini USB, I would go for the hundred bucks because in the long run, this is going to be a pain in the ass. This will not. Now with that aside, another thing that makes it worth it, at least to some people, is the fact that it comes in white. There's just not a lot of budget microphones that come in any other color other than like, you know, black. Like if you want Blue Yeti abilities, typically speaking, you, that microphone's gonna be black. And if your setup calls for something white on your desk versus a black microphone on your desk, having a white microphone makes a big difference to not clash with your setup. That's just how things go. Fashion. Anyway, that's pretty much all I got today for this microphone. So if you do want to buy it, I will leave a link in the description, which is an affiliate link. So if you buy it from that link, I will get a slight kickback to help run this channel. Also, self-advertising, I am now on Twitch where you can watch me play games and chat with me while I'm playing those games. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description to that as well. Now with everything being said today, if you did like the video, do leave me a like because that will help me out with this whole algorithm thing in the whole YouTube space, you know what I mean? And if you'd love the content, do remember to subscribe if you want to see more content, but you want to know when it's happening, do remember to hit that notification bell. That being said guys, I'll see you next time and have a good day. Choose your microphones right, USB-C forever.